Hi, I'm Iris Fritz, and I'm a math instructor with the Gateway Program, housed in the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. I'd like to welcome you today to learn how to make 12 formulas out of two formulas using Ohm's Law. As you probably have been introduced in your classes right now, is uh, you've been offered the memory wheel, which is called the Ohm's Law memory wheel. And the memory wheel offers 12 formulas that you literally have to memorize. And that can be very painful. What I'd like to show you is all 12 formulas came from just two. Two of the core formulas used in Ohm's Law. So let's begin and start to learn how to solve for the unknown. This is called transposing formulas in math. The two formulas that I want us to begin with that you should commit to memory are basic Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance. And I'm just going to use the letters that represent this information. It will make our day easier. So as you can see, E equals I times R. And the other formula that you would like to keep in mind is P equals I times E. So these are two of the 12 formulas that I'm going to be working through today. Starting with the first one, where we have E equals I times R, I want to remind you on how to solve for an unknown, because it may have been a while since you've been introduced to this, and, or maybe it was high school when you played some of this out, and you've been out of high school for a while. So if you notice, any time in mathematics when we have a left side equaling a right side, this offers us a lot of power, if you will, in math to solve for the missing piece of what I think of as a puzzle. So again, a left side equaling a right side. And the next thing we do when we're solving is we have to keep in mind that no matter what, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do exactly the same thing to the other side to maintain the equality. So think of me as the equal sign, and if I am, if you will, scales. And if I weigh down this side for whatever reason to help me get work done, as long as I do exactly the same thing to the other side, I maintain the equality. I keep things equal. Now, in mathematics, another thing we do when we're solving is we use opposite operations to help us isolate or solve for the missing piece. I always think of the opposite operation idea as if I have a knot that's tied up this way, how do I untie the knot or unravel it? I use opposite, if you will, direction. And it's very similar to what we do in mathematics when we solve for an unknown. So if I have adding and I want to undo the adding operation, I must subtract. So add the opposite operation is to subtract, and the opposite of subtracting is to add. And this now goes to multiplication as well. Well, I'd like to review some basic thinking that we should have in place before we go ahead and we solve using the two formulas that I have introduced. One thing that we need to keep in mind is any time we are solving, we must have the following relationship in place. There has to be a left side that's equal to a right side of an equation. I must have a left side equaling a right side. And the thinking is this, and think of, if you will, scales, balance scales. There's a lot of power in mathematics when we have a relationship set up where we have a left side equaling a right side. As long as we remember this, whatever we do to one side of the equation, and notice how I'm leaning right now, I have to do exactly the same thing to the other side to keep it equal at all times. So if I do something to this side of the equation to help me solve. I must do exactly the same thing to the other side to keep the equation equal. And again, this offers us a lot of room to manipulate an equation and solve for a missing piece, if you will, solve for the unknown. Now, another thing that helps us solve is to remember that we use opposite operations. We use opposite operations in math to help us isolate or solve for the unknown. So let's just review some opposite operations. This is probably something that you're familiar with, but maybe you haven't 
played your math out for a while and you needed an extra boost, a little reminder, and that's what I'm doing right now is just reminding you that when we use opposite operations, it is actually allowing us to manipulate the formula and change the form of it, but not what it means into, if you will, something that's getting me closer to solving. So the opposite of adding something is to subtract. The opposite of subtracting something from both sides is to add. These are opposite operations. Also, the opposite of multiplying is to divide. The opposite of dividing is to multiply. And so again, we use these opposite operations to help us solve. And one more that we'll need in place before we begin today and work with our two formulas to create 12. And that is the opposite of a square. The opposite of something being squared is to take its square root. These will cancel each other out, if you will. The opposite of a square root is to square. So as long as you remember this and can identify the operation that is affecting or is uh, working with your unknown, you'll be able to, if you will, untangle these knots. And I look at equations like big tied up knots sometimes. It helps me, if you will, take the pressure off of being able to untangle that knot and actually isolate for, my, uh, for the unknown. And this will come together as I start to work these formulas through.